What you measure is what you know is what people say, but knowing doesn't equal actually getting results. So I like to say, what you measure is what you increase. And one of the best kept secrets in entrepreneurial world is that it is much harder to get twice as many people through your door than it is to get twice as many sales from the same people by simply increasing your conversions. Increasing your conversions means, you know, having a, sl a faster load time on your website so more people actually stay to see what is on your website. A higher conversion means sending out an email to the same amount of people but getting more clicks on it. There are many, many ways you can increase your conversion rate and thus get more sales. And in this episode, you're gonna discover all about it. By the way, this is a sneak peek of my newest course, The Launch Gamebook. So you'll hear me refer to the course a lot and uh, yeah, I hope you'll enjoy it. Hello, hello, and welcome to the Fast Forward with Amy show, the show where we lift your life and business with simple strategies. I'm Fast Forward with Amy, your host and coach, and I'll bring you a new episode every Tuesday. We can't talk sales and sales data without talking about conversion rates. The objective of conversion rates is that we want to understand, compare and increase the performance of your different advertising channels. That could be your email marketing, your Instagram, whatever you want it to be. So what is a conversion rate or a conversion percentage or a conversion I think a conversion, it kind of sounds like I want to convert someone to a cult. It's not that. Uh, what I'm talking about is how many people take the desired action following a certain event. So for me, for example, when I send out a broadcast and I'm like, hey, 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 please come and watch my webinar. The conversion there for me would be the people who opened the email and then the people who clicked. So from the people who actually saw the action, who actually took action and clicked it, that could be a conversion rate. But a conversion rate could also be 500 people registered for a webinar and 10 people ended up buying from the offer that was pitched in that webinar. But it's just a, a, a further <laughs> conversion rate. Um, what I mean by that is if we look at this slide, for example, let's say I emailed 100 people and 50 people actually clicked and then 30 people signed up, then the signed up versus the amount of people emailed is a 30% conversion rate. But if we look at from the people who clicked, the people who actually signed up for the webinar, that's actually a 60% conversion rate, you know, between the steps. Um, of course, the more you lose here between the steps, uh, the more you lose in the end. And if you end up with two people who buy compared to 100 people you emailed, then that one email to the end. Yeah, the end of the funnel here, the person who bought is a 2% conversion rate. So you basically get to choose where you identify your conversion rate. But for example, with a webinar, I would say that here it has to do with, I would calculate my conversion rate on this. So I would do two divided by 30. That's my conversion rate. But, you know, it, it's, it's kind of subjective because maybe you're like, oh, I uh, don't care about all of that. I just want to know of the people who are actually watching live, how well did that convert? So those are the two things I would track for a webinar. Um, and I would also be tracking a different sequence of like, okay, if I email 100 people, how many people actually sign up and do what I said, you know? Um, so you can choose how you fill that out. The most important part here is that you do track as many steps as possible. You do learn where you lose people. This is basically like when you have a website where you need to click through and click through and click through. The longer load time uh, your website has, the more people you're going to lose. So you want to get as high a conversion as possible um, because that will get you more sales. And a good example of this is with webinars. A lot of people put a lot of effort into getting someone to sign up but then they forget to remind them to actually show up for the webinar. It's a lot easier to increase your attendance rates for a webinar of the pe of the people who already signed up than it is to all of a sudden get, you know, 100 extra people on your email list. So doubling your conversion in one of these steps is easier than doubling your entrance point, uh, but it kind of has the same result. So what is a conversion rate or how do you calculate it? Your conversion rate is, um, well, the way you calculate it is kind of the rule of three is what we would say in Belgium. Um, conversion percentage is amount of people who took action divided by the amount of people you reached with that step or with a previous step times 100, and that would be your conversion percentage. So for example, 100 people clicked on the email that you, you know, reached a thousand people, 
that means that you have a 10% conversion percentage. Um, mathematically, um, I'm thinking here, the 100 should be 100%, I think, if you want to really be anal about this. <laughs> I, I studied business engineering, so sometimes I get tripped up when I look at my own slides. And I'm like, oh, someone is going to get uh, antsy about this or they want to position it in this way or that way. But what I kind of want to remind you of, so like, why am I recording this? Why am I explaining this to you? Well, thing is, you actually learned this at school, but you just never learned how to apply that. So I prefer focusing on principles instead of the, the tiny details of how you should write a certain thing, because you know what this is about? It's about the fact that you learn how you can take control over your sales. It's about the fact that you learn how you can actually hit your targets. And in order to do that, you need to know how many sales do I need? What's my conversion percentage? How many leads do I need? So Usually you'll know a couple of these facts, but not all of them. So maybe we need to know what is your conversion rate. So because you want to know, um, you know, how to hit your targets and next time, then we would divide the amount of sales. So those actions by the amount of leads, that's your conversion percentage. But maybe you say, hey, Amy, uh, I really want to know how many sales I'm going to get. I know how many people are going to sign up in my webinar or, or are going to show up. And I know my conversion rate on webinars. So that will result in mm -mm, sales. Or maybe you know how many sales you need and what your conversion percentage is, but you just don't know how many people you need to get to your webinar, for example. Then that means you're going to divide your target amount of sales by your conversion percentage and that gives you the amount of leads you need to be targeting. So all of that is the same formula, but just flipped. Uh, and that's something that you actually learned at school, but maybe you just never applied it to do stuff like your sales. Um, I already showed you this visual. I think, yeah, what does this mean? It means that you don't need to think that you're not good at maths. You just, the way I do this is, um, I mean, a lot of people come to me or follow my coaching like, oh, I've, I've never been good at maths, but I don't think that's true. I think you were probably just never taught anything to do with calculating that was interesting. Like maybe you learned how to do maths with uh, apples and pears, but why didn't they give you money to count with at school? Or why didn't they teach you stuff like this? Because this is much more interesting. And let me just... I don't know, make you happy by saying you don't need to be good at maths to be good at making money or keeping your money in your business. You do need to get good at tracking your data. So something like this are things I actually built. I'll be like, okay, I send an email to that many people, that many people click, that many people open, that many people actually attended the webinar, blah, blah, blah. And then I'll be like, oh, this is a funnel. Cool, that funnel actually was very effective. So if I could pay someone to get 200 people extra on my email list, then that would get me that many sales. So I know that I could pay that person up to a thousand euros because I will make a lot more from that. So all of this will enable you to know what to invest your time and resources in. You'll be like, okay, maybe I can invest more in ads if I actually know what they're getting me. But a lot of people are just like, you know, basically carrying water to the ocean because they, they are putting a lot of effort into the start of the funnel and getting and putting so much time into creating new Instagram posts and blah, blah, blah. But then they don't check it, what the conversion rate of their online shop is, for example. If you work with a software like Shopify, for example, they give you a lot of data right there on their page. They tell you what your conversion rate of your shop is. They tell you how many people come back. And every time... There is a leak here or a door that's too big of an obstacle. You're going to lose so many people. And then everyone is just so focused on this step without nailing the next steps. But it is much easier to double your business by doubling your conversion rate than by doubling your traffic. That's a really great, great quote by Jeffrey Eisenberg. That's what I want to want you to walk away with from this conversion rate uh, chapter. And just know that what you measure is what you increase. So you can host a webinar or do a launch or whatever without knowing any of these stats. You can compare it to my stats, but they're mostly just examples. You shouldn't compare it to me. You should compare it to yourself. You should learn from yourself. And as you are measuring all of these things, how many people show up, how many people click, how many people buy, you're going to see that it's going to get much easier to increase your numbers. So start increasing your sales by tracking and optimizing your conversion percentages.
I'm almost nearing the end of the launch of my launch gamebook course, which is obviously why I also wanted to gift you with this extra episode about launching. And if you've been, you know, in doubt, like maybe I should check out the course, but I don't know if launching is right for me. I invite you to just think about what do you want to accomplish this year? Do you want to get more sales with the same effort or with less effort? Would you love it if so many more people would discover your products and services so that your act- so that your passion actually becomes profitable? My guess is yes. I think money is nice, but getting people to actually experience your products and services is so much nicer and that's where true fulfillment comes from. So go and check out the launch gamebook before we wrap up the launch and go to fastforwardamy.com forward slash the launch gamebook because it is the coolest thing I've made in the past couple of years and I'm sure you're gonna love it. 